innuendo video. Welcome everyone, this is Kathy Bartoli from the Intimacy Dojo and Reed Mahalko from readaboutsex.com. Alright, so we just did this whole thing on speed flirting. Um, and I and it was getting long, so now we're jumping into this little second piece. This is the innuendo game. Uh, when I used to bartend, I played this game with the waiters and the waitresses. And the goal, the, <coughs> the goal of the game was is to make another person blush. And the way you would do it is you kind of like word volley back and forth, um, a word that had some sort of double entendre or innuendic meaning. Um, or that you would just deliver it in such a fashion that the other person was like, oh. <laughs> and when you make the person blush, that's how you score a point. Mm -hmm. And it's not word association. So uh, it's not prohibited, <clears throat> but don't think about it as word association. So like if I say like, pickle, you know, don't go, cucumber. <laughs> you know, like, it's not like that, but you can be like, pickle. And then you can be like, Lubricated. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't have to be word association. We will now, and the, the goal isn't really to get anywhere. It's not competitive. You score points by making people blush, to create a reaction, um, and it's really just about being fun and playful. Mm -hmm. All right, so would you like to start? You go ahead. Nice. <laughs> it's a lot about delivery. I think you just scored a point. <laughs> when in doubt, you've scored a point. <laughs> I hope they turn red. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Point. <laughs> get it? That's all! That's the game! <laughs> and it's supposed to be kind of dirty, you know, but you could you could say, like, penguin. And have somebody blush. Because you never know what's going on in their <laughs> mind. Trying to make associations. Yeah, what they do with, with words, okay? Um, so that's the innuendo game. It's really just about, you know, creating um, fun and play. Uh, and also just understanding that, that you know, with any kind of flirting, any kind of inviting people to be playful with you, especially with innuendo and, and sexual connotations, um, you might actually start getting turned on because you're, you're creating kind of an intimate connection and exchange with your play. Mm -hmm. and, and that might feel nerve-wracking or dangerous or inappropriate. Um, and if and when you do feel like that, or you're getting turned on and you don't know if it's appropriate, what I usually do is I just tell people, I'm like, I'm like, hey, um, I'm actually getting a little turned on by playing this with you. Is, is that okay that I'm getting turned on? Um, more to check in if you should kind of, well, eh, let's, let's not play this game anymore, rather than is it a bad thing that you're getting turned on. It's never a bad thing. And just because you get turned on doesn't mean it has to lead to anything. Mm -hmm. Um, in the same way that cuddling doesn't have to lead, you know, to sex. Um, flirting doesn't have to lead to a date. It doesn't have to mean you're misleading somebody. But it can actually be fl flattering. So, like, if you're playing this game and the other person's getting turned on, it's like, wow, I'm doing a really good job at this game. Yeah, because oh, wow. that kind of, the giving people permission to play, mm -hmm. in a culture where we're not given permission, can release so much, like, Yay! Energy that, and then sometimes that energy goes to your groin, to your genitals, and you get turned on because you're like, "Holy crap! Like somebody's finally playing with me." And we're adults. You you can say the word moist <laughs> or pickle and be like pickle. Like it's okay. I think a lot of people have conflict. Like the whole point of flirting is you want to connect with someone and. Maybe be aroused, but we have our society is there's kind of like oh that's bad you you know you may not be able to control yourself. Yeah. That that comes from being teenagers, yes. where you know our parents say don't do this you can't control yourself. Mm -hmm. We were teenagers, we're jacked up on hormones, and we're also we have our prefrontal cortexes are not fully formed. We have no impulse control, so that little cocktail is the perfect storm for people getting a little rambunctious. Um, I don't think it's the end of the world, but what 
is the end of the world is no one told us, hey, by the time you're 22, 23, you have impulse control, knock yourselves out. <laughs> no one tells us that. So we carry all that weird shame and, and we kill off play in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, I also think, and I said this in the first video, it's useful to expand your idea of what flirting is mm -hmm. to any kind of playful exchange. With the checkout person at the grocery store. Yeah, where you're inviting them to play back. And that you can really drop in quickly, like, just so you know, I'm, I'm flirting with you, but not in a creepy sexual way, like, more like a, I'm throwing the frisbee of fun at you and catch it and throw it back. And you'll be surprised how often people will be like, oh, because if you were really creepy, a creepy person wouldn't say that. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's my, you know, kooky advice on, on flirting and, and trying to invite more play in your life. And how cool if you get to be that person where people are like, oh my god, it's the flirty guy from the grocery store who's so much fun. Or it's the, you know, intimacydojo.com person, Kathy, and she's <laughs> so much fun. She's always playful whenever I see her. Go be that person. Good and, luck with that. And Reed has some tips on speed flirting, and mm -hmm. the link is below.